So Shetty, welcome to Spirit Science Live. Um, for those who are just tuning in and who have never heard of you, uh, Shetty is a YouTuber. He's an animator. He makes videos about spirituality and psychology and stuff like this. And I, I mean, maybe you could probably actually introduce it a lot better. Um, Shetty, what do you do and how did you get into it? So, yeah, the YouTube channel, The Journey, is started about uh, five years ago. And uh, I was having some problems in my school life, in my, in my dating life, in, in the way I build friendships and everything. I was having problems with social anxiety. And uh, I was having problems how to regulate my emotions. It wasn't like a serious thing like bipolar disorder or anything. But... Uh, I would, I, I realized that I would feel more, I feel sensitive, like more, uh, I would get attached to people more than, more than the normal individual and uh, um, to friends and to, to not just in romantic relationships. And um, yeah, there was some, some problems with the general problems that people have, like the low self-esteem and all this stuff. I... I probably five years ago wouldn't be able to do this kind of uh, live podcast. So, uh, it started from there. I think about, yeah, five. No, the journey started about you know, like 15, 16. Now I'm 24. So let's say eight, nine years ago that I realized I have all this. And I realized the self-development community uh, the spiritual community, the spirituality and uh, meditating and all that. I wasn't that into that uh, in that period. So I started reading classic self-development books, classic self-development, like uh, watching motivational videos and trying to build my productivity and all this uh, classical stuff just to improve my life and improve these uh, aspects of myself that I saw were lacking uh, in strength compared to other aspects of my ego that were positive of my personality. Um, from there, and then after two, three years of reading books and just developing myself a bit more, I think about it was 18 or 19, I started the YouTube channel. And I started sharing that. So self-development books, just the classical one. I could name a few if you want. I, I still remember them. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of a major in Jungian psychology and just psychology in general, right? So is that where, where you started on that? Yeah, I started with, uh, just to make it brief, so yeah, just to, to make it brief for you, I started with the classical self-development and I wasn't that into the, the depth psychology, Jungian psychology. But after two or three years, I, I realized that I, I feel like I could absorb more complexity in ideas absorb more complex ideas. I was craving more depth in, in terms of my development and the ideas that I was reading, the books that I were reading, they were helpful, but I didn't feel this connection. Something was calling me to something else. And I got deeper and I stumbled upon Jung and I started sharing that on the channel. And I started reading a bit of philosophy, but psychology is... Uh, is more the emphasis and I and I got deeper into Jung like uh, archetypes archetypal psychology the shadow shadow part shadow work and my uh, journey with self-development I think um, you could call self-development psychology you could call it self-development too but um, my journey with actual psychotherapy, I started even reading psychotherapeutic manual, manuals while sharing the Jungian psychology on the channel at that point. The self-development part stopped. The Jungian psychology started from that point on the, cha on the channel. Sorry. And uh, with that, I started reading psychotherapeutic books and 
this CBT, cognitive uh, therapy, and DBT, dialectical therapy. Um, there's other ones I don't remember. I, I also started applying this uh, EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping techniques. I tried acupuncture and I tried to focus on major life blockages. Uh, and that was the transition from self-development to Jung. It was after three years of starting the channel. It was one year of chairing Jung and uh, psychotherapeutic work on myself. Uh, yeah, so that was this, this is how I, I stumbled upon Jung, started sharing it. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a, a bunch of those videos now on your channel and they're all really... Uh, they're very insightful. They're really good. I mean, I wanted to ask, uh, like, uh, well, there's a few different questions here that are on my mind, but uh, just off the bat, like, you've exp experimented with so many different types of healing. What mm. do you feel is, like, the most potent form of healing that has at, at least worked for you um, in terms of, like, you know, going through resolving traumas and facilitating healing and this kind of thing? Mm hmm yes um so the way i see it so far i tried like a hundred therapies energy-based cycle energy-based modalities it's a very interesting question because i do i still do use some methods i have more powerful methods than those but i still use the ones that i used for example a year ago because I see like uh, very specific problems, they can be healed much faster by that method, even though another method is much more powerful in terms of uh, clearing uh, the, the intensity of the issue. The other one can be less intense, but more rapid. So what I use is different combinations for the same kind of problem. So, um, I would answer your question in brief and then I will detail because my mind just thinks like this, like a tree. The most potent, yes, okay. Blockages so far, I realized they, they are on different layers. So you have the mental blockages in terms of thoughts and limiting beliefs, like uh, if somebody wants to start to make uh, more money than they're making right now or start a business, they get this thought that comes up over and over. Okay, I'm not good enough to do this or I'm scared to do this. That's a fear in form of thought. But the fear can come in the second layer of the blockage, which is emotional. It's, uh, it can come mental, first, first order mental, and also emotional. It can come as a thought that comes up in the head once you think about starting that thing and as an emotion in the body, as the energy uh, being summoned in the body and uh, blocking you as a fear. Some blockages, they are not mental, but just emotional. You have no thoughts inside the head, but you feel it inside the body. You feel this energy that is stopping you. Other blockages are body-based, and they can include the thoughts and the emotions. It could be a tension that comes up in the body. You feel really like actually paralyzed when you think about uh, your endeavor. And uh, the last layer is spiritual. And these days I work on that one. I work on the body one, subcellular uh, blockages. If you work, on the subcellular level, that's, I think that's the most potent. And the next one would be the spiritual one to answer your question. So body-based techniques, body-based psychotherapies. Just, uh, I have friends who've been doing yoga for years and I haven't tried any psychotherapies and so many of their blockages, they were gone completely. Yoga takes a little bit more time to actually, uh, start the healing and you have to choose the the, the correct and the right the right uh, type of yoga some yogas are some types of yoga are very dangerous to do actually you have to have a a, a legit guru so 
Body-based psychotherapy is extremely powerful for any kind of blockage. There's this uh, therapy is based on energy, like um, energy it touches on the energetic level and also the the uh, the body-based level. It's uh, the Reichian Reichian psychotherapy. I think it's William Reich. That's the name of the guy. What else? No thoughts. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, that was a very thorough answer. And like, okay, so you're talking a lot about healing and blockages and the different layers at which the blockages can, uh, can, can manifest in. What causes blockages? Based in, I mean, again, like, because I think this is something that a lot in the new age world, the spiritual world, these are things that like, it comes up a lot. But often it's also very um, nebulous in that, you know, it's, it's, it's subject to everybody's sort of perspective and opinion and, and thoughts and ideas about what that could be or look like or how it could manifest. So just, you know, as a psychological major, but, a, but also a spiritual psychology major that you are, uh, you know, what are blockages? Where do they come from? Mm, very good question. Um different types of blockages as I said they reside on uh oh it's an amazing question man i like these questions you're asking me because uh you know i already have answers but also the moment brings up so many realizations as well and uh yeah, i think you resonate with this too so what comes to mind in the moment is that blockages or illusions Fears, tensions in the body are illusions on the spiritual level. I do believe that we are still, I mean, there's the argument that you you are not, you don't exist and there's this matrix. We're living in this matrix of the physical and it doesn't exist. And the truth is the spiritual because beyond these buildings and this uh, laptop that you're talking through to me and uh, beyond everything that is, everybody that is watching us, here um, the room that you're sitting in actually if you zoom in if you keep zooming in on every single particle there's absolutely nothing at some point there might be atoms or beyond that maybe some energy and beyond that what is what is there there's absolutely nothing that's the uh, this is one way to access a certain state of consciousness actually uh, and uh, you can build up on this feeling and then you feel that there is nothing basically. And there's a stillness behind everything. There is this absolute stillness that is very silent that you can tune into and relax there. Now, I do believe that this is the source of it, a source of it all. Uh, this source has other divine qualities like unconditional love, presence, bliss that you can also tap into enlightenment is the, the highest level and after that i don't believe i don't see i believe but i don't see that blockages are emanating from this source because i do believe that this source is pure and unconditionally loving and very strong it has so many strong it encompasses so many divine qualities like strength honesty humility unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. So this is the source of us, of it all. And um, blockages, I haven't really thought about when did they start exactly, but so far I know where to find them, where, how, I know that they are there at this place and I know how to clear them. But I don't know this source. I know this pure source, but there might be another, some kind of, I wouldn't say evil source, but something that started at some point in the past, in the eons and eons ago, that started this uh, separation between us, between ourselves and others, and um, egos, negative egos. Now, I haven't given much thought to that, but let's uh, make it simple here to answer the question, where the blockages are, where they originate from. I haven't given much thought to that, but uh, 
subcellular body-based blockages, there's some kind of parasites in the cells. You don't experience, you don't feel this in your daily life. You don't feel it. There might be some parasites or there might be some kind of uh, damage inside the cells. And that on a subcellular level, you don't feel any tension or anything, but uh, that's what's generating your low self-esteem, for example, or that is what's generating your, uh, your uh, fear of uh, public speaking or whatever. And it is ancestral. It is archetypal, as I said. Uh, the source I haven't given the the initial source of it all of all blockages I didn't think about that yet but it is kind of uh, a heritage it's a heritage of blockages they come from your ancestors they come from uh, didn't think about past lives yet but yeah there are some uh, blockages that are past life based also so it's all coming from the past and from the subcellular parasites in the cells or these damage. There might be a parasite or a damage in the, inside the cell and it's a disturbance. It, it, it creates a disturbance between the communication of, between this with, with, with this uh, damaged cell and another healthy cell. And this lack of communication creates the, the blockage generates the blockage and these parasites or this damage can be created in the womb as well you inherit it from ancestors this ancestor it has this kind of parasite inside the cell and then they they bring uh, like uh, their offsprings they they get married and then they bring the same thing over and over again it's the case with, uh, for example, narcissistic or borderline personality disorder or bipolar. Like it's a heritage of some kind of cells that are damaged or, and they inherit the same thing. Like the, ch the children, they inherit the same thing. Now, that's one source of the blockages. It's a heritage of parasites and damaged cells. The second one, there might be no heritage we all inherit some good and bad traits from our parents including these blockages and uh, they inherit from their parents as well but we there's new ones as well that can be created in the womb separate from uh the traumas that can be inherited and for example you are in the womb you're gonna get born soon and you're still inside your mother's womb, okay? But the cells can be damaged by the negative emotions that the mother experiences while you are in the womb. And that will create disturbances because you are still developing your body inside the womb. And any kind of disturbance, even like your mother like they surprise her with her birthday or something and you're still inside the womb and she gets some kind of shock, very small shock. And that could signal, it, it creates a signal of like a negative emotion and it can interfere with the cells that are being, that are developing still developing and that damage there when you grow up it will translate into some kind of low self-esteem problem so i hope i answered your question yeah i mean there's uh, it's like with every question there's a lot there to unpack each time uh it seems as though there's i mean tell me tell me what you think of this is like you know the you describe the layers like the you know you got the physical emotional mental spiritual and that like you can have traumas you can have whether they happen to you or ancestrally on any one of these frequencies and then those frequencies can kind of expand and affect the different parts of your body right so if it starts with just a simple belief of like let's say uh you know your dad yells at you or your dad was yelled at right this is like passing on uh generationally hierarchically kind of thing 
um, of like, uh, you know, fathers telling their kids or, or parents telling their kids that they're not worth very much, you know, when it starts like, or you're a worthless child or, da, 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 or you're useless, right? Mm -hmm. Like that can really just start as a mental or an emotional experience for the kid. And then it can become, it, it can, it can become like a physical problem in the body as well, because the more that they believe that, the more that they yeah, yeah, yeah. feel it, the more they act from it. And then it is creating, an, it, it really is like an energetic blockage where yes. feelings of self-worth can't transition, right? Um, does that resonate with kind of everything that you just, like, what you yeah, all Yeah, absolutely, your, absolutely. Yeah. Like you reinforce some kind of belief, also different circumstances that it get, they get in the way and they reinforce the same belief with emotions and energies and uh, kind of structure, energetic structures they build up around the body. And one block is that, might have been uh you might have been able to clear it in with a cognitive uh thought based therapy in one single second like this it can become something chronic on a spiritual level as well so i do i do agree 100 percent. yeah cool and and um i mean you 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 briefly mentioned shamanism and i know here on your bio like and, and just kind of learn, learning about you is like that you actually have practiced neo-shamanic psychotherapy. Is that correct? Yes. I never really used the word neo-shamanism, but uh, yeah, that would be post-shamanism. Uh, yes, 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 yes. It's correct. Can you, tell me, can you just, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Cause that's very, I'm very fascinated and interested in shamanism myself and uh, of course, my experiences with shamanism more is to do with ceremonies, um, indigenous cultures, and and all, mm. often a lot of plant medicine ceremonies, like for, like uh, down in you know Central and South America. So I'd be very curious to see kind of where your road has taken you with uh, with shamanism. Yes, shamanism is basically uh, esoteric healings. So it's a very old kind of. Uh, healing they use the plants like the ayahuasca and uh, rape all this i i never tried ayahuasca i tried rape uh, i don't know if you know that they do it I'm, in the i'm Australian very East. yeah i'm very familiar with rape yeah i tried a bit of that now i don't do i don't do rape um, <laughs> can i actually yeah. can i can i ask you quickly like what was your experience with rape how, how, yeah, how did you like it how did you not like it yeah, I liked it a lot and it helped me to, I I bought the, the bottle for Third Eye Rappé. That was my first one. It was extremely powerful. It was not extremely powerful, like the different types of uh, plants that they use and mix, they get you different kind of experiences. But uh, this one, it was powerful in its coldness. The Third Eye Rappé, it was, I felt like this, when I was closing my eyes, I close my eyes and I meditate and I do the, the shots, the rapé shots. I feel this cold, very intense lightness. It's, it's a lightness that feels so heavy. I cannot even describe it. And the energy was like <laughs> green, green, green type of heavy lightness that is cold. It's, it was the most favorite type of rapé that I tried. Uh, after that, I tried some here and there. Yeah, I enjoyed that for like a month, month and a half. And I kept doing it. I tried some more, uh, I think like three or four types. At some point, I stopped because um, I, I, I was doing some practices that required some mental clarity. And the last rapé I tried, it was very heavy and i felt like it was uh, uh creating some brain fog but probably because i didn't i didn't take a pause from the rapé and they advised to take at least like two weeks if you do it for a month straight you take two weeks of a pause just to relax your nose and everything and i didn't maybe that's why but also it could be the rapé itself i was creating this brain fog and i couldn't focus much but nothing serious, though. It, it's a very powerful uh, um, 
medicine, say. And it helped me to clear so many realizations, big realizations I, I got during a rapé meditation of 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's, it's really amazing. Definitely. I'm going to... Well, mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to say just for, you know, for people who are listening and they are unfamiliar with it, Rappe is considered a sacred snuff. Uh, it is like a ground. It's like, there's actually four, from what I understand, there's four different types of tobacco medicine. And today we use cigarettes and smoking and that's not a med- medicinal use of tobacco. But if you go back into the ancient traditions, tobacco was a very sacred medicine and it was very, it was used very specifically for clearing out old toxic rough bad negative energies within you and i can testify as well that it's very powerful for that um and so there's water tobacco earth tobacco air tobacco and fire tobacco so fire is smoking air uh, air is the repe earth tobacco is like chewing tobacco and water tobacco is like a it's like a tobacco drink that is apparently very purgative just like ayahuasca is in fact apparently it's nasty and i've never tried that one (laughs) but um but yeah the the repe um, I had a very similar experience to you and I wanted to just speak to that as well because, uh, I, I, th- and it's probably, there's probably some connection too, because l- many years ago I was in a, a, a really a rough relationship that, um, I started smoking cigarettes for a little while. It didn't last super long, but there was a short period of, of addiction. And I think that the rapé was very healing, but there was this very small part of it where it was like, you know, like the nicotine of the tobacco or something Mm. did have that pull. Um, and I, and I got to that point where I was just doing it a little bit too much. Um, and I, you know, I, I also would not, didn't take a, a two week break or anything like that. And I would go for a month or two, uh, or longer, sometimes longer, um, doing it fairly consistently. And I just had this experience just in this past month, actually, where, I was just actually kind of having the same, I don't, even, I don't know if it's brain fog, but I, I would pr- you could probably describe it like that. It's like, it felt like there was a, a thick membrane around my psychic channels, around my, around my head, if I can. And it was like a very visceral experience of this like thick membrane. And I was like, ooh, I know exactly what's causing that. And I definitely can see like the effect that it's having on my energy. It's a very clear indication that it's time to, to stop for a while. So I'm I'm also clean on Rappé for for mm. I don't know the specific number of days now, but I, I yeah. but I am I haven't touched it for a while and I feel very good and I know that at one day probably in the future I'd like to take a longer period of time. So it'll probably be, be like half a year to a full year before I want to touch it again because I I want to really honor and respect the sacredness of the medicine and not treat it in the way that I had been. But there yeah. is that risk there, especially for people who. Um, have smoked if there's that you know that that nicotine pull or whatever but I will say like at the same time it is a very powerful and very beautiful medicine and I've had a lot of amazing experiences on it and with it uh, in in just like little light meditations and and even in ceremony and stuff like that so thank you for also for indulging me and as I shared that because I just wanted to speak to it more because Repe is very I have a lot of history with it and it's just very near near and dear to my heart so anyway, sorry, you were talking about neo-shamanism and uh, you were talking about Rafa, you haven't done ayahuasca and where were you going to go from there? Yeah, I want to I wanna tell you a bit about maybe one or two sentences to close with the Rafa thing. I think uh, with ayahuasca, I, I'm, I was drawn into the idea. I was being called by it somehow. Uh, couple months ago but it wasn't the right time i think but now i think it is and i'm planning to to do a trip to to do a ceremony ayahuasca ceremony the rapé you gave me a very good uh a very interesting insight right now about rapé in the cycle when it becomes uh some kind of a pull to the pleasure of the hit and you start doing it for the spiritual purpose, but also for the high <laughs> that you get out of it. And once you start doing the medicine for that purpose, I think it starts to weigh down on your energy, like your energy starts to feel a little bit heavy. Mm-hmm. Probably that's why we, we got that <laughs> that experience from it. And the respect, kind of, the respect uh, part of... Uh, 
of your speech. Yeah, I think if you respect it, I remember, yeah, I did took some pauses here and there, like two, three days, and then I would actually forget about it completely. And then I'm like, oh, feel, let's do it again, you know, why not? And there was no pull to the desire of having that high. And then I would get the best, the most amazing rugby experience mm-hmm. in that day that day so for sure well and this is the, that's the amazing thing is like i've had both for myself and i've seen this happen with a lot of people is that when for someone who's not doing it regularly or it's their first time or if, if you know if it's like a, a, a an occasional thing and of course very ceremonial and sacred it seems as though it facilitates a lot of big changes in people's lives very quickly um, I, I mean, I've seen this, like I have a friend who, uh, who I met maybe several months ago and she was going through a lot of different just life stuff. And just for the sake of, you know, anonymity and everything, I don't want to like, you know, describe her whole life story, but we'll just say that there was a lot of struggles that she was facing in her life and just drama with other people that she was dealing with. And so I introduced her to the repe and she was blown away by the experience. Um, and then she, she ordered some for herself and tried it once and from that one i mean like our first experience was very moving and powerful but like after the one of her doing it for herself um she basically described that like all of the especially this drama that she was having with this other person in her life just like entirely melted away and like like job like job opportunities and job, like her existing paradigm of work and stuff like just shifted very quickly. Um, and, and she attributed it like to, to the energy of the rep a, like how powerful it was. So I think like, yeah. that's really how it has to be used is treat it like an ayahuasca ceremony, even though of course ayahuasca is a lot longer is, is this very sacred calling in of a powerful cleansing force to get you aligned and, and yes. it's, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, I do agree, man. It's amazing. I believe that uh, people who have a lot of emotional blockages or something very big going on in their lives, the, that energy, that life, that uh, earth energy that you summon in a rape ceremony by yourself or with others, it just cuts through everything. It's like, imagine you have this continuous stream of very large and big stream of uh, emotion, negative emotions. And then you take this knife of uh, this, this energetic knife made out of light, white light and golden sunlight. And then you just cut through everything like this and you start cutting and I think people who have a lot will ex- will have a much more profound experience with the rapé with people who, who don't. I mean, people who don't have will have too, but it's very subtle. And uh, but people who have a lot, yeah, a lot of blockages, they will see a lot of uh, changes, very notable and big changes, because the the traumas are more or the problems are much more clear, much more potent compared to somebody who is, let's say, doing yoga for 15 years and so many blockages melted away already and he's got like uh, 10 or 5% of ego left. They will have a different kind of experience, but uh, the people have a lot of uh, negative emotions and ego to work with think they they will see a very big blow with the with the rape so i do agree man yeah Mm -hmm. and just on the subject of shamanism too then uh, what other plant medicines have you explored with or other modalities of shamanism yes so i did not uh, try any kind of plants or any psycho psychedelic psychedelic uh, substances i didn't try any but i had a lot of similar experiences with higher states of consciousness uh work the work that i do on myself and others and it's related to the shamanism and uh the shamanism part is uh, basically summoning 
elemental forces, life forces, water, sun energy, uh, sun liquid energy from the heart of the sun, uh, volcano from the heart, from, from the earth, rocks, trees, and healing them, using them as healing modalities. And um, basically, the subcellular blockages that I was talking about, one of the deepest blockages. And uh, I found a very rapid and extremely rapid way to use uh, the shamanic healing, this elemental energies to like in an imaginal way, I could tell you to imagine a tree and we work with that tree and we summon energies, we absorb energies, different types of divine qualities from that tree that they already exist, but most people cannot feel this because they're living on the physical only. And the imagination a very specific imagination will start to affect some, it, it kind of symbolizes a very specific subcellular part of the body. So if I tell you to see this and we work with this, we're actually touching here or here inside the body directly. And it's extremely powerful. So this is the shamanic part of my work. Also the higher system of consciousness there's the uh, Gaia connection state, transcendental state, which is related to shamanism, connecting to life, connecting to earth, connecting to trees and every single living being. And when you're living in this Gaia connection state permanently, when you make it permanent in your being and on all levels of being, and like you, 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 uh, you can you can just sit by yourself and uh, you're extremely connect in this state you are the earth the heart of the earth and the earth is self generating self loving and infinite in terms of its love to the planets to the people with its oxygen uh, to uh, there's no uh, segregation there's no separation like everybody from the earth is nourished in the same quantity and in the same quality of unconditional loving uh, earth life force emanating from the heart of the earth and somebody like a plant we have different plants on the physical, but they are nourished by the same minerals and uh, the same kind of dirt and everything. And even like if there's a plant in, in the sand, it's nourished by the same thing. It's, it's on, like underneath the sand, like deep into the, near to the crust of the earth, there's a lot of water. And there's the same minerals that a plant that is nourished by in, in Africa or Europe, there's nourished, it's, it's like all this, Every single part of the planet is given the same amount of love and the same exact type of love from the planet. And we're eating out of this. We're eating the, the, the love, the plants grow from the love of the earth. And we're eating those plants. We're in, and if you're eating animal products, I do eat meat, still eat meat. Um, the, these animals are eating from from these plants and basically you could feel this connection in this state you see it very clearly not on a thought level you don't think but when you look at the tree you feel that it's you because let's say it's a an orange tree and you eat the orange basically you are taking earth love from the orange because the orange was nourished by the same by the love of the earth with all these minerals you see what i'm talking about here is it clear yeah no it is i mean i i think there's something to be said too about like that our well like the planet is naturally going to be producing you know it, i mean itself and all of the things that it creates with that life force, with that love, with that 
cosmic energy. The, the challenge, I think, is our cutting off from it. And the two ways that have come to me as, just as I was listening to you is one is through, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the concept or subject of earthing or grounding of like just like walking barefoot on the, the ground and how healthy that is. And like actually like it can help heal, tra- uh, not, I don't know about trauma, healing um, diseases and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but we put, you know, an inch of rubber underneath our feet for our shoes. And we actually cut off that flow of energy from the planet into us. And then like, even like, you know, eating an orange or, uh, you know, a fruit or vegetable or something like that, after they've all been like sprayed with so many pesticides and stuff, there's a lot of that life force energy that is diminished, right? So we kind of cut ourselves off from that energy, even though it's there. And I think that's the, one of the biggest challenges that I see. Uh, but uh, I mean, everything that you're describing makes perfect sense. Like it's there. We just have to be, we have to be receptive to it, yeah. you know? Yes. And in this state, yeah, I do agree. I mean, in this state, the guy connection state, the state can be acquired gradually. For me, it was gradual realizations of entering this earth connection and feeling that I am the earth because I'm eating out of the same love that these plants were nourished by and these animals were nourished by. So I am that. I am that. I made out of that. I made out of these plants and these animals or whatever that you're eating and that are absorbing this energy from the earth. And the earth is made out of the same. It is these energies and these minerals that it's giving. So we are it, we are the planet. This is how I see it in this state of consciousness. And however, um, one thing to point out uh, in what you said, like, um, yeah, these pesticides, they do affect this kind of connection. And I absolutely agree on the separation that we made with our thoughts and we actually made so many amazing technologies with our thoughts, so many helpful things. But uh, these buildings, they came out of thought, our thoughts, basically. They're just creative imagination. These buildings and this uh, clothes and everything, uh, and, uh, they're quite helpful for safety and, and everything. But still, as you said, with the earthing concept, we're... we're we're uh, being pushed away from seeing who we truly are. And I'm not saying that we are just that, that we are the earth and that's it, that we are self-loving and self-generating by nature, that we are love, just like the heart of the planet, because it's us and we are it, based on everything that I said so far. It's just one single state of consciousness from many that I'm living in and that I know there's also like God connection or universe connection or whatever kind of uh, God that you believe in. Uh, but it's the same experience. Now that goes beyond even the earth connection. It's on an energetic plane. It goes even beyond the universe. Some states go even beyond the universe. You could embody these states inside the body. Now, um, yes. So, contemplating nature some of my uh, one good friend of mine he's a coach and he's been doing yoga for like uh, i don't know how long now and he's he's working with uh, the states as well and he's uh, teaching pe- people how to raise awareness gradually so that blockages disappear automatically but just by raising awareness and accessing transcendental enlightened realizations and thoughts with uh, meditative practices, very specific practices. For example, like um, one week of looking at the wall and uh, without going out or talking to anybody, no social media, nothing, just, uh, sorry. You can like take a shower, you can cook. If you feel like crying, don't, don't make any sound. If you feel like yelling or screaming or just don't talk at all there's no try to try to be as silent 
If you feel like you're falling asleep, not because you're tired, but because of the practice, just take a walk inside the room and that's it. It's a very powerful practice that I recommend. It helps you access a certain state of consciousness. It's inner stillness, state of consciousness. One week of just doing nothing. You can close your eyes, not intentionally to meditate, but you could just, you can sit there for hours just looking at the wall. And you're going to have a lot of stuff coming up. The stuff that all these technologies and all these buildings that Jordan was talking about were separating us from all these divine qualities and states of consciousness and this higher level of being that we could access. All this is going to come up. And this is one single but very powerful practice to, to do to try this out. You could try it for six hours. Uh, or for one day and uh, me and my friend uh, this coach we call it the uh, the uh, silence practice that's it just sitting in silence with yourself mm -hmm. and you're going to experience a lot of thoughts you're gonna see that your mind wants to think so many things but you're you're distracting it and it wants to think all this stuff just so it could clear itself, so it goes back to its silence, which is its essence, beyond all the thoughts. This is how to access this state. It's very powerful. If you sit and you give your mind all the time to actually be and to express itself, then you will feel at some point like, well, I thought so much just by sitting here and by distracting myself. I, I would just think here and there, then jump to the next YouTube video, and then I stop thinking. And then, so yeah, it's a very powerful practice. I don't do it anymore, but uh, it's very, very powerful. It's extremely powerful uh, for, for anybody. I recommend for anybody. Mm. Uh, it helps you to be more silent inside and to connect to it's going to clear so, so much, man. Like uh, the therapies that I do and the shamanism, the, the neo-shamanism, it's one way to clear those blockages very quickly. But there's so many different ways. Like my friends are coaches as well. They have their own methods. This is one of them. I do recommend to try it out. And it's very enjoyable, actually. And uh, just the thought of it, so many people are like, whoa, I'm going to sit with myself now. <laughs> That's what I had when, when I first thought about doing this. Now, yeah, just one, just one last note about the Gaia state, the Earth connection state. We are separated. And even the thought of going out to nature, we could have some resistance to it, especially with people who are not used to going out to nature. When I got into the state, man, I, I just love to just go out and look at a tree. I'd be looking at a tree for two hours, just sitting with a tree. And sometimes I get some insights. It's like I, I could speak to it. I could speak to the earth. And I get so many realizations and it transforms into videos and to live, uh, solo live podcasts on on my on my facebook group and everything so much content just came out of me just sitting and looking at the grass and just realizing that whoa like the grass is green on the other side of the planet too and there's no separation the planet is loving <laughs> is loving everything unconditionally so all of these i do recommend you just go and start uh, also to uh, to everyone everyone watching just go into nature and just face that resistance to going into nature because that resistance is coming from what Jordan said, which is the separation between uh, the separation that we made with the technology buildings and the shoes <laughs> between us and nature. And we forgot that, but nature is extremely healing and I do recommend you engage in nature sporadically at least here and there throughout uh, at least once a week and just sitting. I really yeah. like, I really like, especially that 
just that you spoke on the silence and sort of the personal vipassana meditation because you um i mean i mean like there's a a, a lot of conversation and interest about vipassanas uh you know just in the world like like lately growing more and more uh popular but you're describing and that's like a whole retreat you know you go for three four days a week you know maybe longer sometimes 10 days mm -hmm. and you sit in silence and there's sort of a group but everyone has you know has their own space and energy to just be silent and you're you you're really painting a beautiful picture here of like you can just do that on your own you could just take a day take a week or you know whatever a weekend even if you only have you know if, if you're living a busy life and everything and you want to just like have like a a mental emotional detox a dopamine detox it's actually sometimes it's called a dopamine fast where uh you know you just don't let yourself like watch entertainment and you just disconnect from everything that's going to give you that dopamine kick right maybe yeah. you even eat maybe even eating boring foods <laughs> you know no like no processed sugar although i would probably say this now <laughs> it's like boring foods but mm -hmm. yeah like like you know giving yourself that fast giving yourself that time to just be present is such a beautiful simple and elegant meditative practice that will completely that can completely transform your reality and i love that and i i need to do more of it so i appreciate the reminder yes. and i'm going to integrate mm -hmm. that into uh maybe a weekend here to come or or mm -hmm. take some take some time off i love that yeah thank you yeah man i do recommend it a lot yeah you're welcome uh just one last point about the vipassana uh i never actually did the retreat but i did this uh it was uh as i said inspired by a friend of mine who's doing yoga I do recommend it's something else on top of this, if you're gonna do it by yourself or with others, which is if you, if you have the time and the space for this, I'm not saying that you run away from your family, friends, uh, girlfriend, uh, wife, whatever, but it's extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful if you can do this. And it's, uh, for example, if you do the Vipassana thing for one week by yourself or with others, it's very powerful too by itself. However, you're going to go back to the same thing after that. And something else that you can add on top of that, if you can, which I did for two to three months straight, actually it was the, the past two, three months. Now I'm more like connecting with people again. What is it? I just go out alone. I i uh i don't go to places where there's like loud music or any loudness i would just avoid any kind of distraction and sitting with my mind just for places where silent and avoiding any human contact i would talk to people maybe like three times a week <laughs> or or five or or even less some weeks like uh it was the first month I didn't talk to anybody. It was like, I met a friend once that month. I don't recommend complete isolation, although it's much more powerful, powerful if you can take that. And what I'm saying here is you take one or two months where you're doing these silence practices and the Vipassana thing, but also you add on to that time with yourself by yourself, going out, sitting by yourself just with your thoughts try to try because your mind is going to try to run away from itself too because it's too much there's so many things that your mind does not want to see and doesn't want to process so many parts of you are scared of other parts of you to come up but if you stay with yourself you avoid any kind of stimulus that will pull you to just distract you from you distract you from you is going to clear so much in a, in a very short amount of time. Even one month of this is crazy. It's crazy. Like, uh, and one of my friends, they done about five months of isolation. It triggered some kind of depression at some point, but he got over that because he's doing some spiritual practices, but it's insanely powerful. And the states of consciousness that he accessed just being by himself in isolation, 
he would go like uh, buy groceries and everything but then apart from that just being alone just sitting on the beach alone eating alone uh he would have contact with family and friends maybe once or twice a week maximum that's it like a 30 minute call and then back to oneself and it's insanely powerful you don't need any psychotherapy after that if you do it for like a few months you could do like uh, two weeks that's also okay um i think you're really speaking really well to the 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 value of the consistency as well too right like when you actually can take the time to show up for yourself like if you just sit and you meditate for 15 minutes one time and then you don't do it again you're not going to see a lot of results if you do it every day and you make that a consistent practice then you're continually like refining and bringing in and cultivating that higher level of consciousness and it's the same thing with going in nature in fact even more so probably because you're you're taking in that earth energy not just mm -hmm. one time for a short period of window but like over and over and over right and that shapes you and helps you evolve in very beautiful ways mm -hmm. yeah yes um also jordan the uh, the blockages the layers of blockages that we're talking about uh as I said, you could use shamanism or psychotherapy, but still, if you use the silence practices with just uh, forced solitude, it's gonna be very powerful. If you do it for one week, like one week Vipassana, I know some people that I know who did that, but they're still having, uh, they cleared a lot. They cleared a lot. Some people, for example, I know who were unable to feel guilt which is uh, very big. It's like a narcissistic uh, pattern. But now they could feel at least a bit. And there's a bit of empathy shining. Uh, but still, there's a lot, for example. And what I'm saying here is that one week, it might be enough for some blockages, but for others, you might have deeper and deeper stuff. And the things that you cleared might be holding on underneath other things that are much more powerful and extending the practices as jordan said is just uh, uh, much more it's gonna go deeper and deeper into nothingness basically so that one week of apashna some people they don't have a lot of traumas that's enough it's just some one week, that's enough. One week every two, three years, it's cool. But uh, if you have a lot, low self-esteem, and yeah, I recommend you extend this. You extend this, and uh, or do it, or do it like um, okay, one week per month, or one week per uh, per two months. Very powerful, mm -hmm. because uh, one single week, if you have a lot of traumas, you're not gonna get as deep just you're gonna get you're gonna clear some things but not everything and don't be surprised that you still have so much or other things came up after you clear that that small thing with that one week so yeah mm. i agree yeah 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 cool um so shetty we're we are getting close to the end of our time here so before before we end though i wanted to ask you there's one other item here specifically on my list i want to ask you about uh, which was your take. Now, this is, of course, combining all the things we've, we've thought about, talked about, you know, in your experiences with psychology and, and shamanism and everything. Um, what is your take? What does it mean to be enlightened or to go through an experience of enlightenment? There's different definitions for different people depending on the gurus that they have sought out or listened to their definition. Um, Okay, my personal experience. My personal experience on a thought level is from my thoughts, from my mind, what my mind brain could say is, uh, okay, it's very difficult to connect to my mind here, but okay, Con conceptual, okay. On a conceptual level, enlightenment is uh, the dictionary, dictionary, basically, dictionary meaning would be to, uh, 
to uh, transcend or to clear all attachments on a mental, emotional, physical level to the point where you don't need to, uh, to uh, you don't feel like you need to satisfy yourself anymore. Even just drinking water or eating or uh, reproducing uh, is the highest level of consciousness, the highest level of awareness. And it's a state of awareness that includes all other divine qualities. You might access unconditional love, transcendental state. And you, you could see the love in the, in the buildings and everything inside, outside. You might connect to earth, as I said, the Gaia connection state. You feel more alive, more, you might connect to the, the void beyond everything. You feel silent, completely silent inside. And there's no thoughts almost every single second of your life. But still, you're not enlightened. And I see enlightenment as uh, in the highest of the highest of all these. And it is, it is a divine quality. It is separate, a separate state to access, but it's also connected. It's, it encompasses all the other states. And you don't feel them separate in this enlightened state. You feel just one single thing. You feel like you are understanding, loving. You could see the understanding in the walls. You could see the love as well. But you cannot separate between the two. You could see life and earth in, in, the, in your laptop. <laughs> like inside your laptop, you could see the, the, the volcanoes inside the earth or something. You could feel them. Uh, this is enlightenment. Now... What my heart is telling me would be that I think I already said that, including the, the mental conceptual level, my understanding of it. Um, there's degrees of enlightenment. I do believe that it's a separate state. I do see that it's a separate state from all the other states of consciousness that you could access. Uh, some gurus, they have access to these states I'm talking about, but they're not enlightened. Some gurus, they, you feel like they speak from the same source. Their words are divine in nature and in energy. The energy behind the words of all these spiritual gurus that you see online today and the ones who died. And, and have written books and everything. You feel this, the, all of their words are coming from the same source. And most of them, they might have touched on enlightenment, but so many I see, for example, today, they have access to just certain states, but not ultimate enlightenment that includes all other states of consciousness. And uh, yeah, these states of consciousness are basically... I see as fragments of the soul that you can access, and each fragment is a divine quality, unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, honesty. And enlightenment would be um, accessing and embodying the soul completely and absolutely into this physical. And at some point, you, you're one, like one step ahead of... Uh, exiting the body because so many people they they uh they attain this state and they actually exit the body when they stumble or they don't know how to handle it or the body is not ready for it so this is how i see enlightenment it's a state of consciousness that includes our all and anything else mm -hmm. it's uh, devoid of duality and uh in this state, I think you could create miracles like at the speed of thought and you could create, like generate things at also. And you have access to unlimited and infinite universal intelligence. You know how to make magic or anything that you want to do. But probably if you access the state from a spiritual perspective, just two or three words here about my spiritual perspective. So I gave you the mind, the heart, now the spirit, my spirit, uh, my knowing would be 
that uh, the enlightenment, who I lost, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> we got to the best part <laughs> and then it's gone. <laughs> Maybe that's the mystery that's of the happened. spirit. It's very elusive. <laughs> hmm. I see that what I was going to say is that from uh, the perspective of my spirit, spirit of how much i'm embodying my spirit and my divine qualities uh the divine qualities not my that anybody could access of course i see enlightenment as I mean, there's no separation and there's there's no person inside there's no i there are zero thoughts inside the head and there's no problems and you cannot see any evil or pain in, in the world. You just see ultimate truth, which is that even beyond that pain and uh, suffering, the source is nothingness, basically. There was something much more interesting I was going to say, but it just went away. But anyway, yeah, that would be, that would be it, I think. And I, I think it was thorough enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I like the um, sort of the the unified duality of everything and nothing in the same breath. That's a yeah, that's very interesting. It's sort of just like the the perpetual inhale and a- exhale of the source or God or spirit all taking place at the same time. It's just something to think about. So with that, uh, Shetty, we come to the end of our podcast here. Thank you so much for joining me. And for everybody listening who wants to tune in and check out your content, uh, where would they go to find you? Now, of course, we'll post links in the description down below and everything, but um, but can you share with us, like, where's the best place to, to find you? Mm. So the, the best place right now would be um, my uh, new Facebook group, we have about 300 members now. So there I'm sharing how to access these states on a practical level. Um, and I'm sharing uh, healing techniques that I've accumulated throughout the years and I'm doing uh, so many things on that group. So I do recommend that you head there first if you're, if you're going to check out my, my content. Um, and I have uh, direct access to, to my audience there on the, on the group. It's called... Uh, peak transformation so that would be the best place to to actually get direct uh, practical knowledge and insight on the healing and i do actually share um for free so many healing techniques that can get your results very very quickly and also how to make these states of consciousness permanent so so yeah you can check out the peak transformation facebook group and um, the YouTube channel as well. I got back on it two two weeks ago, and it's gonna be a little bit slow. Me sharing this new insights on the YouTube channel, but there's a lot of micro content being shared on the Facebook group. So I just grab my phone and I just uh, record myself and I share something practical. There is very quick and there's a lot more content there. So, so yeah, Facebook group. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, thank you again for, uh, for joining me here today and thanks everyone for listening. Yeah. Uh, thanks a wrap. George. I really appreciate the presence. Thank you, man. Definitely. Thanks for having me. That's a wrap. Thanks everybody. <laughs>